it is time to review a CSV practice question. Let me just uh, let me log into the brand new Study Notes in Theory CSV members portal. Oh, I'm so impressed with myself with this new platform. I just couldn't be couldn't be more impressed at how fluid things are now. The old platform was hand designed by me, every part of it, and you can probably tell that because. Uh, I'm not really a designer, just a CISP instructor and CISP content creator. But this new platform is nice. Uh, really just made a lot of things easier for me, and I hope for you as well. Okay, this question states, the information security officer has overheard a help desk representative suggest to some of the employees, hey, if you really don't want to change and memorize your passwords all the time, just add the letter A to the end of your current password. Then, whenever it is time to change passwords, just use the next letter in the alphabet like B. The security officer found this to be a weak form of password complexity and has convinced senior management to issue a new password policy. From now on, all passwords must meet the following requirements. Minimum of eight characters, cannot be a previously used password, must have letters, a number, and symbol, and must be changed every three months. Fred, one of the employees, has created the following password. What would be the fastest technique to discover Fred's password? Is it brute force, social engineering, a dictionary attack, or a rainbow table? What is the answer? What is the answer to this CSV practice question? For choice A, make no mistake. Brute force attacks will always manage to crack a password eventually, whether it happens in one week, one month, one year, or three billion years from now, it will happen. It all depends on the complexity and work factor required on the password. But the question is asking what would be the fastest technique to discover Fred's password? I mean, look at that password. That is one complex password, real complex, it's very strong. Could be a little bit longer though, but, but that's okay, that, that's okay. Let's take an online password cracking estimator and see how long it says it'll take to crack this password. Oh, just FYI, never ever put in your real password to anything on these online password cracking estimation website things. It's just not, uh, it's just not good business. Okay, test a new password. Let's put in the password cat first to make sure this thing actually works. Mm, okay, cat, yeah. It'll take 0.19 seconds to crack the password cat. Sounds about right. Okay, now Fred's password from the practice question. Well then, yes, that's a long time. It'll take until infinity to crack that password. <laughs> um, does it say what kind of CPU or processor it might use? Uh, nah, that's okay. Uh, let's assume it uses supercomputers. Even with supercomputers and processors or dedicated advanced graphical processing units, GPUs, it might take shorter than infinity. So, you know, let's say maybe it'll take 67 trillion years. <laughs> Holy cow, that's a long time. Uh, by, by then, our sun will explode or, or rather die off. The Earth will be gone. This solar system will be gone the universe will have cooled down and pretty much collapsed into itself and have been totally destroyed. But brute forcing this password will take even longer than all of that. Oh man, math is awesome. You guys realize that? I suck at it, but math and cryptography and encryption, this stuff is just, it's mind blowing and mind bending at the same time. All right, choice B is social engineering. What's the one thing about social engineering that we all know from our CSB studies? Like brute force, will social engineering always work? Not always, not always. Um, certainly not against CSSPs, am I right? Uh, just kidding. It'll work against CSSP, CSSPs too, but just might be tougher to do since we've been trained and we've been studying on how to kind of avoid those kind of uh, uh, attack techniques. Social engineering doesn't always work, but it has a way of circumventing a company's defense and depth controls. Social engineering techniques can avoid firewalls, can avoid data loss prevention technologies, 
can go around physical security and just strike at the heart of the weakest element in any organization, the users, the humans, the people with a conscience, the people with kindness in their heart and conviction to help others when they feel they're in a tough situation. Essentially, we are all good deep down and want to help others feel good too. And this is exactly what social engineering techniques take advantage of. Social engineers can convince even the most vigilant security professional to somehow give up their password or, or fall for some sort of scam or trick to get their password. I mean, right now the, the date is November 9th, 2021, and Robinhood, the, the cryptocurrency and stock trading app, just had a data breach in which social engineering was used to trick a service representative into getting access to their support systems. Okay? So even a password that would take over 67 trillion years to brute force can be discovered by social engineering a little bit quicker. For this study notes in theory CSV practice question, the correct answer to what is the fastest technique to discover Fred's complex password? The answer is social engineering. Because it's going to take too long with brute force, and a dictionary attack and rainbow tables do not apply, which we'll talk about next. I mean, they do apply, but it's not as feasible as social engineering. Because for the CSP exam, remember, you're going to get four choices. They all seem like they can be right, but you have to pick the best answer. Let's look at the other two choices just to, just to wrap this up. Choice C is dictionary attack. This isn't the best answer because a dictionary attack deals with common words that can be found in the dictionary. Like the, like the password we used earlier of cat, that would be easily discovered with a dictionary attack. A dictionary attack is for common or well-known passwords, or, or words, phrases, or just, you know, combinations like password123 one through th one, two, three, or Luke ABC or ABC123. That's why it's important to not just add a random number or letter after a weak password, but to truly just make it a completely new and complex password. Okay, A dictionary attack is not the right answer because Fred's password is too complex to be found in a dictionary. Let's look at choice D, rainbow tables. A dictionary attack and rainbow tables may seem like they're similar, but there is a big difference. With brute force, we are trying to actually figure out every combination of letters, numbers, and symbols, figure out the actual and exact password. Oh, oh, sorry about that. Oops. Sorry, that's my kid's. That's, that's my kid's lightsaber that just turned on in my room. Sorry about that. Pretty cool. It's Kylo Ren's lightsaber. Show me the power. I'll show you the power of the dark side. Love Star Wars. Uh, rainbow tables, um, instead of in, rainbow tables, instead of trying to match the exact password, is trying to match the exact hash of the password. Uh, let me tell you something: when passwords are stored in your computer, they are not stored in plain text. That'd be a pretty big security violation. They are stored as a hash, meaning it's a string of fixed letters or numbers that have been generated after the real password has been put through a hashing algorithm like MD5 or SHA1. Whether a password is one character long or 188 characters, the hashing output will always be the same fixed length. Okay, A password is hashed, so it's not easy to just view all the plain text passwords stored on a computer. And that includes even by the systems administrator or the security engineer or whoever is in charge of that server. They can't just view those plain text passwords. Mm, another term, or you know, to use a CSP term, the data custodian can't use the can't view the passwords while they're maintaining the data. Believe me, nobody in the real world of security has ever, in my eight years in information security, has ever used the word data custodian or data owner. These these are all just CSSP terms to know. Anyway, uh, your actual passwords are not stored as the actual passwords on your computer or servers. They are stored as a hash, so nobody can read it, upholding both confidentiality and integrity. Um, but why not encrypt it? Why hash it and not encryption? Although I wouldn't really associate this with the exam, um, let's, let's just say this. Hashing is a one-way function. There is no decrypting it. There is no reversing it. Once it's hashed, it's hashed. 
with with encryption, there is a way to decrypt it. That's what encryption is. It's about encrypting and decrypting. Better to hash it because you don't want anybody to have the ability to decrypt it again. But traditionally, just remember, for the CSP exam, that, that encryption is for confidentiality and hashing is for maintaining integrity, respectfully. So let's say a user's password just happens to be the word cat, and the, and the equivalent MD5 hash of cat is this string of fixed length uh, characters. This is where you can use rainbow tables, as in the MD5 hash of the word cat is this, right? So if a rainbow table has within it a collection of simple, well-known passwords and their corresponding hashes, and one of those hashes match with the MD5 hash of this, then you know the password is cat. You see what I'm saying? Oh, by the way, cat is also lowercase, not uppercase. If C-A-T were uppercase, then this hash would look completely different. Okay, so you see what I'm saying? You have a rainbow table. In it, you have a potential password of cat, and then you have the associated MD5 hash of cat. Oh, by the way, this MD5 hash of cat will always be the same no matter what. If you use MD5 to hash the word cat, it'll always be this same fixed length output of characters. That's how you maintain integrity. That's how hashing maintains integrity. I can give you this fixed length uh, output of cat, and anybody can run the word cat through an MD5 algorithm, and you will always get the same. If it's not the same, then you know the word password isn't cat. It changed to maybe uppercase C-A-T, or C-A-T-1, or C-A-T-2. Okay, anybody in the world can hash the word cat with MD5, and the result will always be the same. So if a collection of hashes were stolen from a system's database and were compared to the hashes in a rainbow table, and one of those hashes matched up with one we have here, we know the password is cat, lowercase cat, C-A-T. Doing this reduces the time to figure out a password than you know, doing a brute force. Only catch is this is going to work with simple passwords. Like You're not going to find a database with Fred's complex password in it. I mean, imagine the size of the rainbow table if you were to have every single combination of letters, numbers, and symbols and their equivalent hashes. The, uh, once again, it would take you until the end of time. You, you might as well just brute force use brute force techniques. Okay, so for this CSU practice question, rainbow tables is the incorrect answer because one, Fred's password is too complex, and two, social engineering is a better method. And just to recap, dictionary attack is not the correct answer because it does because Fred's password is too complex. And what was the what was the first choice? First choice was is it brute force? Uh, no, because that would take way too long on this complex password. Okay. Thanks for watching.